Hey there, welcome back for another ASMR video. Today we're out in the wild, out in nature. We're taking a hike through Bill Baggs State Park. So join me as we hike through this beautiful green path and we're gonna end with a beautiful view of the bay with the sun shining and it'll hopefully keep you warm during these cold, this cold winter. So let's go. All right, so welcome to my hike in Bill Baggs State Park. So I thought I'd begin by telling you about this park. So where we are, first of all, is in the southern tip of Miami. If you uh, see a little island that's sort of jutting out, that is uh, Key Biscayne. And uh, it's a beautiful tropical island with wildflowers and blue skies, beautiful blue waters, manatees, and pretty much anything you could desire in a tropical paradise. The beginning of this land really starts in ancient times. It was a natural formation, and it was home to many Native Americans. So they've actually found some artifacts that date back to uh, ancient times. Some of the tribes that lived really in this entire Biscayne Bay area, and that's really where Bill Baggs resides, as the Dacesta tribe, which I've talked about in some of my other videos. You can imagine just this beautiful landscape, but as it is today, it's, it's quite different than how it was back then. So I'm going to get into that in a little bit. But essentially, this is not how this island would look naturally. It's sort of hundreds of years of development. You'll see a lot of wildlife, as I mentioned, manatees, different types of birds, sea turtles, um, obviously all the wildlife that exists in the bay. Um, but also here, this, I just walked past a snake, and I actually tried to record it, but unfortunately I was unsuccessful and slithered away before I could get down. So this area in Florida, really, there was a lot of pirates. I'm actually going to do a video on uh, Blackbeard and some of his adventures in this area. But uh, you could imagine sort of a combination of just you know, Native Americans, you have pirates, you've got Spanish, you've got English. So it was really changing hands frequently. It was like early 1500s, uh, it was Ponce de Leon, one of the uh, Spanish explorers, if that's the right word, uh, conquistadors. Uh, so maybe that's a better term. Uh, he came here and he called this Cape Florida. Now at that time, it was a very uh, dangerous and uh, dangerous place. You had wild animals, you had turbulent waters, and that's actually uh, why they erected the lighthouse that you see in some of the videos I took. Um, the lighthouse is really part of the history of this little area here in Key Biscayne in general. So that's a really beautiful light right there. You can kind of see the lighthouse fading away in the background of those beautiful blue waters. It's free to enter, so you can just come in any time and go check it out. And a lot of times you can actually walk to the top I want to say it's a, it's a, as far as the Blarney Castle, uh, it's it's pretty uh, it's a pretty steep hike up there. Maybe it's eight to ten through or something like that. I keep his gain, which is Bill Bags is a part of. It's sort of broken up into three parts. You've got Crandon Park up in the north. You've got the village, which is the actual town, and then this is the southern tip of it. So, but uh, later on. It's really to the 1800s, that's when they built the lighthouse to help sailors uh, in these waters. Again, the shores of Florida are littered with shipwrecks and, and things like that because of the uh, just the difficulty navigating the waters down here, whether it's from uh, hidden coral we reefs or sandbars. Um, that's sort of just something to think about. Let's move into the modern times. So the 1900s came around. And Florida was a booming place, really. Again, like I said, it kind of tells the story of Florida in general, this area. You had railroad tycoons and New Yorkers coming down here to party and 
live in the tropics, good weather, build hotels and things of that nature. I believe it was the Royal Palms, the first one, but it was at that turn of the century, and that's really when Miami got its big name, and land development was going quick. Uh, it was, as I mentioned in some other videos, uh, Biscayne Bay quickly developed, and there, a lot of the natural habitat was lost, including in a place like here. So this area was planned to be a real estate development. Uh, they, actually, I'll show some pictures here. Uh, but as you can see, they're essentially uh, roads and canals built. The, the canals were built to help the mangroves. And uh, it was deforested, as you can see. It was uh, set for development, and there was some development. But the story gets a little complicated because uh, it was really in the Prohibition era. I'm going to tell you about another place. I hopefully can get some video here, but there's a place called Stiltsville. I recommend you take a look on Google and see some close-up photos, but I'm going to fly my drone close, uh, as close as I can get uh, from the shore outside of the park, and hopefully I can get some good footage for you. But essentially, uh, we... It's these houses that are built on planks. You can imagine, so imagine these houses on the water. And about one mile out from the bay, all of a sudden you're in international water and it's illegal. So they built these houses on stilts. And the people, especially New Yorkers, would go to party and drink where it was legal to do it um, on those houses. And so they had clubs and bars and restaurants and it became one of the hot places in Miami during the 30s. I believe the first house, there was claims it was in the 20s. I, I can't remember this gentleman's name. It's like Crayfish Jim or something. It's something amazing, a very Florida name, but that guy had the first house and he would serve some sort of crawfish stew to his guests while they partied up the night. And so that sort of sprung up. But later on, of course, uh, the vibe died down and hurricanes really hit very hard and uh, damaged the buildings very, very extensively. So it wasn't until later on that, uh, so there was a fire and uh, the vibe kind of just, it ended with that. And that was the Stilts Village. Again, you're gonna see some footage here. We'll attempt to Maybe get on a kayak and get some, like I said, some footage, uh, drone footage from one of these islands, uh, a little bit outside of the park. Um, you gotta be careful with safety, so you don't wanna be flying into these mugs uh, from inside. So, as I said, this is sort of in the southern part of Biscayne Bay. But, um, essentially they decided, oh, what was that? It was maybe a blizzard or something. But, uh, uh, sorry, I just trying to refocus myself there. But they created this park and they reestablished the mangrove population here. As I said, uh, mangroves are, um, in, uh, in previous videos, they protect against hurricanes and things like that. Um, and they're really good, uh, you know, once again, sort of brackishy water. Uh, but, and, they, and they line the Everglades uh, quite a bit, so uh, it was really important to restore them here part of the history there in the 60s, and that kind of leads us to today, where you see Miami as an exploding metropolis. Um, the rents are 50% this year, that's the highest in the country of the United States. So, you know, it's always been a destination point um, for, for many various reasons. So I would recommend a visit here. It's, uh, you can rent uh, bikes, and uh, there are, there's a beach on the other side near the lighthouse. And you can uh, get a boat and go in the water here. There are cheaper options, of course, if you want a kayak or a canoe or something. Um, but you can come here and you can basically uh, enjoy this tropical paradise. It's it's lesser known than some of the other um, places. And a lot of people go to South Beach. Yeah, but Key Skein, uh, Crandon Park in the north can get quite busy. And Virginia Key. But uh, this tends to be a bit of a, a hidden gem. Um, and again, there's a harbor there with a restaurant and a bar. You know, as I said, it kind of started off as a real estate development. So it does have some unique features that you can't see in a lot of other places like this. 
So, that all said, I really hope that you enjoyed this walk with me. And we're gonna just gently go uh, through the forest here, across back towards the water, because it's just so beautiful. And um, we're gonna uh, just Sunny, bright, 